All right, John here, Hot Rods in the Woods with more of a mess. So just want to give you a quick one. So they call this steering setup a suicide steering, which means it's in front of the axle. Ideally, it should be behind so that it doesn't hit first, if you will. Well, a couple of the problems with this. Number one, with these up in place, if it had had a flat tire, it would have tried to catch the bottom of the ball, the tie rod end, which could cause a serious failure. The other side, same way, they were both touching. Um, another problem with that, as you can see, is they've heated it up right here. Now, these are forged steel, so I can deal with that. Here's the way it's supposed to be. This spindle is supposed to be on this side of the car. That spindle over here. They are supposed to be behind it so that with a steering box, it would have the drag link going across, hooking to this side, then with a tie rod going across between the two. Makes it safer, you would hit the axle first, you wouldn't hit your steering. It wouldn't rip the steering wheel out of your hand and try and kill you. So what I'm doing is, I'm taking the rack off, I'm going to set it on the back and see if I can still use the rack. I may be able to. If I put a bracket back here, I may be able to mount the rack and they go over top of the trailing arms, which is the way it's supposed to be, whether it's a steering box or a rack and pinion. So I'm going to set that temporarily in place. We'll take a look at it. But basically when I tear this all apart, because I do have another frame, if you didn't watch that little video from yesterday, I do have another frame coming. It'll be here in a few minutes. We went and picked it up yesterday. My buddy's got it in his truck. And we will put all of this the correct way in the other frame. So I'll be back in a few and we'll, uh, we'll go from there. I should take this off and watch me do that. It'll probably hit me in the head, we'll see. always good when you stack up five or six washers and you're steering. We'll pull these off. Oh look, no bushing. Good lord. How is it even possible? So it's four side. washers. So as you can see, there's no bushing in here, which means that this can wobble. It's not a shouldered bolt. They aren't even grade eights. It's just a grade five bolt holding all of your steering. No shoulders, no nothing. So once again, we avoided a catastrophic accident. So that's it for now. I'll get back with you in a while. Okay, I'm back. So here we go. I have, since I left you, brought the car back down. I removed one screw here in the top of the fender, which was the only thing holding. I've already removed the drywall screw, and now I'm going to remove the fender and running board assembly. Barring no other issues, I believe that it is 100% loose. I'm gonna pick it up, walk it over there and drop it off, and then I'm going to show you why I'm replacing the entire frame. So, let's see if we can get this baby up. Oh, he should have put my gloves on. Real Henry Ford steel, it ain't exactly light. And the older I get, the heavier this stuff seems. All right. So that's now on the ground. So, now we've had this discussion many times, but more I find out. I found a guy where we got this new frame that is just a wonderful help and my hat's off to Bill for allowing me to call and giving me information. A few things I've found out for starters, there are way too many leafs in this front spring. You can see they actually stacked three of the same leaf here, two of the same leaf up here. He recommended I take five leaves out 
and put a wafer in between. He said, smooth the leaves so they move easily. Put a wafer in between each one so that they glide and you'll get a better ride. He said, this thing will ride like a, like a dump truck. So there's that. Of course, we already had the discussion about these being bent. They're aiming the wrong way. They're supposed to be at the back, bent up, blah, blah, blah. The disc brake hoses are just about jammed against the axle. I haven't figured out. All I have to do is turn the banjo fitting and that'll clear. So, but the main reasons I'm changing this entire frame, as we've already said, we've got four holes where there should be one. We have terrible welds. We have a major crack here, which if you look at the boxing on both sides is where there's no box. He attempted to weld that. It didn't work, but that's only for a bolt for the body. So I'm going to put nuts on the inside of the, of the other frame. We have plates back here that make no sense. Um, you can see the other side actually had a big hole there for some reason. This side did too. I don't know what for. We aren't gonna play with that. Uh, we know that this whole axle assembly where the brackets are is wrong. This cross member is totally wrong for this car, truck, whatever you wanna call it, because there's no room for the drive shaft. There would have been had they set the differential uh, pinion angle correctly, but I'm going to change all of that because they had the transmission so high, they removed the original cross member, which is right behind the cab. So we'll be dealing with that as well. So now we're outside. Keep in mind that this is 96 years old. Now it is in really good shape. Yes, it sat under a tree, but you can see there's not a whole bunch of extra holes. It still has the original center cross member. The rear cross member isn't butchered up. But one of the big pluses is the front cross member is not butchered up. It has been trimmed. That is to put a flathead V8 in. We are obviously doing that, but it has had a repair on that frame, frame, frame horn. But all in all, uh, let me get this thing flipped up. We'll flip her the other way. Where the four holes are in the other one, these are the actual studs that hold the radiator in place. The top of the frame is clean. Notice how many fewer holes. Brackets actually in the right place. But all the way down, this is just a super clean frame. It will clean up nicely. Along with the frame, he also gave us the metal parts, which have already been cut to box the frame, which of course I was getting ready to do the same thing, but this just makes it easier. So I have all of those pieces. So that's the two ends. And then I can go ahead and box in the middle myself. But this just helps immensely. This, this is a support for underneath the cab, which there was none. So walking back inside, um, probably the best way to do it is just remember where that bracket is compared to the cross member. We'll show you where the cross member is. So I'll walk back inside. Oh, my dog's grabbing a hold of my gloves again. She probably put them somewhere where she can't get at them. So here we go. So right where that cross member was is where the, it is. And if you compare that with the cab, it's just about underneath the seat. So it's rather an important one so that the whole back isn't just floating because there's no structure really back in the back of this cab. So that gives it something to set on with the mounts, of course. But now look at the amount of holes.
and of course the broken parts. And then we have holes there. We have a bunch of holes here. The other side is no better. So it gives me something really nice to work with. Now, as I said, I'm putting a brand new four link in the rear. So it'll be four link and coilovers in the back. I'm debating as to they make a kit to go a Vega steering box in this, which really wouldn't hurt it compared to the rack. Putting the rack behind the axle, I can actually make a bracket off of the bottom of the springs, remembering I'm removing a spring so I can use some some, it's going to sound ridiculous, but I can use a piece of three inch angle iron. I can cut the center of it, which I just about have to draw it out for you. But if the angle iron just goes to these bolts and then the back piece is wedged to each side just to hold the rack by the rack mounts, I can mount it where it needs to be and it should work quite well. So, and my steering arms, once I turn those around so they're facing in the back, I can put them above the radius arm, which will make the steering protected. It will make it much straighter and it should work quite well to actually make the car drivable. Of course, at the back here, I'm gonna change all this gobbledygook. We'll actually use some real brackets welded to the frame properly. The rear with a new four link. And she'll start going together. So at this point, all I'm going to do is take a few measurements off this frame as to where the center of the axle sits on the frame. It's pretty obvious that it sits right above the just about dead dead on right above the cross member so the rear is pretty easy and the front will remain constant because it has to bolt in the center and i have adjustment on the radius arm to move it left to right if you will this way so i can square it so as long as my rear axle is square to the frame and I put the front axle in the exact same place that it used to be, which is by the spring will we'll pretty much set it and then I'll set side to side. Because I'm using the original stuff, I don't have to worry about any other measurements. As long as everything bolts in place and stays centered, I can't change the actual geometry of the entire frame. So that's where we stand at this point. I will continue on and be back so that you can see how this stuff actually comes together. Something that you really need to notice before I go away here is this cross member has been cut so much that there's the U-bolts are just there. There's no real centering alignment or anything. So that's pretty bad. Whereas the new one actually has a dimple. So there you have it for today's video on how to save me a whole bunch of time and effort. Now, as you know, this frame was pretty much garbage. Uh, and sometimes finding the right piece is worth it. We did pay $450 for this frame with the pieces. It was a seven hour round trip drive. But you just can't beat that for the amount that it saves me from having to just redo every single thing. So that's where we're at at this point. I hope you enjoy. Like and subscribe. Uh, within the next couple days, I'll be able to start putting things together. I do have a little cutting to do here. We'll figure that out. I'm going to leave that lower piece cross member in. I'll put the transmission through that hole. I'll just have to cut those two little brackets off the front so I can mount a GM style uh, transmission mount. So bye for now. Please remember to like and subscribe. There's a lot more coming. It'll start hitting pretty quick now. I'll do these every time something pops up. It might be a day or two or it might be every day. I'm not sure. But thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day.